well, I'm on the board of directors. I am the secretary. I do take the minutes. Um, my favorite part is to work with the young ladies that, that live here, just to be able to spend time with them, to listen to them, to show them alternatives, to pray with them, to, um, you know, show them there is hope, there is a change. And, and I think this is the big difference in Sunlight Home, that Sunlight Home is a safe place to be, but it's not just a place to be while you're having a baby, it's a place to change lives. Probably the most dramatic one is a young lady that came to us some years back that did not believe in, in God, but she did decide she was going to carry this pregnancy to term. The father of the baby did not want. She was a college student. She was a smart young lady. Um, being here changed her. And to make a long story short, she came and spoke at a dinner of ours in 2014. And she is a active Christian. She works for Students for Life now. And so that's, you know, when you see it come so full circle, you know, it's touching lives. That's the, that's the goal of Sunlight Home. It's touching lives. Well, the mission is to make a positive change to, in, in the girls' lives, as I say. It's to um, open up the opportunities to have them see things they've never seen. Um, I guess one of the things, again, as I say, from being involved very early on and having some professionals help us in that, um, in that, in that time, the real-life situations are far more dramatic than anything we can imagine in the made-up world of TV. And the situations that some of these young ladies come from is, is very sad, very heart-rending. You know, some of them are just the more normal, just need a place to be pregnant, but some of them are, are devastating. Some of them come here really never having felt the love, the love, you know. And, and we want them to know we love them, but most of all, God loves them. We, uh, reach out to churches and churches reach out to us. We, uh, we have some churches that help us on a routine basis. We look to the churches for volunteers, for um, guidance, for, you know, we have, we have church groups that will come like once a month and cook a dinner for the young ladies, which that's great. You know, they have a, a, a time to fellowship with them. Um, the girls go have a daily Bible study here. They go to church at a non-denominational church very close to where we are residing here. Um, they participate in activities with them. The church has been very supportive of these girls and including the members that will come up and visit with them and many of the members come and visit right here also. You, you lead more by example than you do sometimes by just the words you say. So you do it patiently. And, and you know, again, like I said, they're very overwhelmed by their situation. They come in here afraid and not knowing what might happen. And, you know, so the first step isn't, is to just make them feel comfortable, to make them feel they are important. Um, sometimes they have the thought that all we care about is that baby, and that's not true. Our first concern is that mother, because if we can't help her, we certainly can't help that baby. So. We want her to know how special she is, and, and that's how we work on the discipleship. We, we show her, her her worth that God has created her. Um, you know, we use some scripture from Jeremiah that's in our, our book, you know, that we, you know, that God has knitted us, that he knows us and he wants us and he loves us and there. So, and the daily Bible study, I think, helps them too. They're not forced to believe or participate, but they are required to sit and listen. Uh, the maternity program is one in which they can come in. We, uh, we ideally love it if they come in early in pregnancy because the longer we have to work with them, the more impact we can have on their lives. We want to make this, as I said, a long-term impact on their lives. Uh, one of the beautiful things we have relating to the maternity program is a Christmas party in which we invite former residents and their children and, and now many times their family of things. We have residents that have been here 14 years ago that still come to this Christmas party, so that's beautiful. So the maternity program is to help them during there. We provide for all the things they need, um, maternity care, other health care needs, um, and, and most of all, we want to help them with their education too. Anyone that comes here without a high school diploma will have to work on their GED. Um, we have a high school close by if we need access to that. We, 
um, help them with college classes if, if they're at that stage. We want to see them, we teach them job skills, we have, um, we teach them obviously parenting skills, we have all sorts of videos in addition to having nurses and others that give personal one-on-one -on -one instruction. So we want them to be prepared to go on to life in a better way than they came here. The transitional housing is for those who have already had their baby and successfully have finished the maternity program. It is a program in which they can stay an additional two years. Um, and it is very important. Uh, living in society is very expensive now, particularly if you are a single mom with a child, and, and even more so sometimes if you are a mom who has chosen the beautiful thing of adoption. And there is no other support, there's no other home in Collier County or, or any in the state of Florida that we know of that provides housing for young ladies who have chosen the gift of adoption. So, um, and again, we help them. They must work while they're here. They, this area here is the kitchen of the transitional housing, and we have three bedrooms, one bathroom, and um, a family room. So they have some privacy in here that they can be in here, but they also certainly can be in with the, the, with the um, maternity home. They are not excluded, but they have the privacy to come to if, the, if that's what they want, because most of them are working in, and want some of that too. You can get involved and support Sunlight Home in many ways, um, by praying for the, our residents, for our staff, for our board members. Uh, we have wonderful staff. I think part of the beauty of Sunlight Home is the efficiency of our staff, the fact that Linda lives here. You can't run a program without that continuity, and the fact that she lives here, she does have weekends off, but we have continuity with that staff. Um, they've been, you know, here for eight years, the staff that does the weekends. Linda's been here for 16 years. And it's kind of like the teenager that knows. If we had someone that worked days and someone that worked nights, they would know which one to ask to get the, what they wanted. But they have Linda full time, and they know she's very consistent, but very loving. That's what makes Sunlight Home so successful. God really put this on my heart. Maybe when I was just very young, um, I was pregnant with my first son, and I was young, I was 21, and I knew somebody that was choosing abortion. And I really felt I didn't do what I could do to speak up. And it was really prior to our Supreme Court decision, but I knew doctors were doing that. And um, I just knew as a Christian that every life is created by God, every life has worth, and that. Um, so it was really on my heart. It was a family thing, very honestly, as my, our children grew. Our children used to think a vacation was going to a Right to Life convention. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's where my husband was involved, my children were involved. Um, they still are involved, very honestly. Sunlight Home is, is so unique because of all of the things that it does, maybe differently. We take no government fi financing. We are completely supported by voluntary contributions. We have, we change lives. I mean, the fact, like I say, that we can see people leaving here different than they came here, and, and that's our goal. The fact that we have the staff that stays here and loves the, the Lord and loves the people they work with, I think that makes us very unique. Hi, I'm Pastor Chuck Reesh. I'm the executive producer at Horizon Media Studios. It's a 501c3 media ministry, and what we're doing is helping other ministries tell their story. Homeless shelters and children's homes, Bible colleges, seminaries, mission sending agencies. With your help, we can continue to help tell their story to inspire the world, to shine their light, and let God get the glory for the work that's being done in advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Thanks again for praying for us.